So we reached out to Amazon and said, could we fly Alexa on the other side of the moon on our last uncrewed test flight of Orion and prove out the technologies that we take for granted here on Earth in one of the most stressing telecommuting challenges ever, telecommuting from the other side of the moon. Alexa, do you want to go to space? I would love to go to space. I just need to find the time to plan it. Alexa, how far is the moon? Today, the moon is 231,700 miles from Earth. Alexa, how far is Mars? Today, Mars is 305.5 million miles from Earth. It was actually giving good answers. Today, moon is this far. Today, Mars is... That's my team. I'm happy now that that works with the today <laughs> part. <laughs> I'm Rohit Prasad, Senior Vice President and Head Scientist for Alexa. You know, we as humans are trained to speak uh, to each other. And language is one of those things where you're just sort of born with it. Of course, you learn different languages, but the ability to communicate through just voice is innate. So I think this need to communicate to a machine has been there for a reason in fiction. The ability to interact with machines has been worked on for years and years. In the 1970s, was focused on the first speech understanding projects. And from those days, progress has been happening every decade, I would say, where in the 80s, you could recognize a few thousand words. But the real breakthrough started happening in 2010 when deep learning took off, where you can train these massive neural networks that could recognize speech much better than before. And at that point, these dreams of being able to interact with machines started coming to fruition. Our vision is for Alexa to be available for anyone, anywhere. I'm Rob Chambers. Here at Lockheed Martin, I am the director of Future Concepts, which means I live out in the future, like many years, thinking about where we're headed. Thinking about the future of where we're going to go as a species in terms of exploration, you have to start sort of with the basics. Why do we even do this? And there's kind of three big questions that we think about for space exploration. Where did we come from? Where are we going? And are we alone? That's really heady stuff. That's the kind of stuff that changes the course of human events and, and the direction of, of where we go. The privilege of being able to work with other space agencies and other companies to explore the solar system is something that sets Lockheed Martin apart. Since 1976, we've been on Mars working alongside NASA. We visited uh, every planet in the solar system and even Pluto. And Orion is the next focus. That is how humans are gonna get back forward to the moon, as we say. And then by 2024, that's when the crew will go in and from there land on the surface, on Orion. Every waking moment will be programmed. Every waking moment. Buzz, this is Houston. You've got about 10 minutes left now and they're gonna be performing experiments. They're gonna be making sure the spacecraft is working correctly. But most of the time is, is scripted because they're there to perform the science and to perform the discovery. So we quickly realized we needed to maximize their tie into the spacecraft, their interfaces to the spacecraft. Anything we can do to make them more efficient the more tools in their toolbox, if you will, uh, including voice assistant tools. This project has many different challenges. The first and foremost was the fact that you don't have the availability of the processing power of the cloud. 
for Alexa to operate at high performance. The second big challenge was the fact that the acoustic environment in space inside the spacecraft is not like your homes. How you capture the audio and how do you recognize it with high fidelity in this challenging environment. Rohit. Hi Rob, good to see you again. Likewise. Many different experts had to come together to pull off a project like this. So Rohit, one of the things we realized early on in the project was that having the spacecraft be quite far away from the web <laughs> and from any cloud computing really puts it at true edge computing. I think it pushed us in big areas. As you said, there is no such cloud availability that we take for granted in our homes of the massive GPUs or, uh, or memory. None of that is available to you at that uh, scale in space. So we have to get to the fact that all the processing where millions of words are being recognized or understood now has to happen just on the device. Incredibly hard challenge because everything you have to scale down by a factor of 100. Absolutely. I'm Brian Jones. I'm the chief engineer of the Callisto payload at Lockheed Martin. This is in particular the Artemis One mission. The Orion spacecraft, and Callisto is the name of the, the payload itself. So a payload is basically a, a component that is flown aboard a spacecraft that has a, typically has a separate intent. So Artemis One is a test mission checking out all the vehicle systems before we fly astronauts aboard Artemis II. Uh, so that's the primary mission. Um, we have a secondary mission, and so we're a payload uh, with that special purpose of demonstrating these unique crew interface technologies. Because we hit, well, we have a couple extra holes cut. Hi, Brian. Yeah, that's... Good to see you again. How are you doing? Absolutely. You too. Welcome yeah. to Lockheed. Where exactly does Alexa fit in here with the light ring and the speaker? So Alexa's computational heart is the single board computer that you see uh, on the right-hand side, yeah. that, that right wall. And then that is where the audio processing happens. And so that's where the microphones are mounted, the speakers mounted, the light ring mounts up. Orion is traveling at 27,000 miles per hour. This reminds me of the origin days of Echo, where uh, I've been in this, this situation. It's fascinating to see how, where the speakers will go, where would the light ring go. Right. Uh, great to see how far the teams come. One of the values of flying Alexa on this early Artemis mission is it's afforded us the opportunity to marry the, the power, the incredible power and capabilities of artificial intelligence and machine learning with the very uh, repeatable, highly deterministic software that we're used to writing for spacecraft so we know exactly what it's gonna do when. When you're coming back from the moon, you don't get to like go into a parking orbit or hit pause. You're coming back at Mach 30 when you hit the atmosphere. 30 times the speed of sound. The outside of the capsule is at 5,700 degrees Fahrenheit. And inside, just a few inches away, it's shirt sleeve environment. So when you think about the fact that everything around the spacecraft is trying to kill the spacecraft, you have to design for all of the failures that could occur. And in the end, what you're giving the crew is the ultimate fighting chance. Hard inventions are in our DNA. And this one has that flavor of revolutionizing exploration for our future astronauts. And what we learn in space will make this technology ultimately become more useful on Earth as well.